brothers and sisters, I'm really humbled today to be in this very distinguished audience and the panelists. I'm especially happy to be coming back with you celebrating the Black History Month in London. Today, I would like to share with you some thoughts about the legacy of my father, Kwame Nkrumah, and of where Africa stands today and its relationship with the African diaspora here in Britain and throughout the world. Kwame Nkrumah believed that the only way forward for African people is unity. That in unity lies the strength. Ghana became the first country in Africa, south of the Sahara, to gain independence from British colonial rule. Kwame Nkrumah had studied in the United States of America and in Britain. As a student, he had faced racism, and he saw for himself discrimination against the black people on both sides of the Atlantic, both in the US and here in Britain. And he resolved that when he returns back to his homeland in Africa, that he would achieve independence for his people. There are two important aspects about Kwame Nkrumah's words. One is that he knew from the outset that the independence of Ghana was meaningless without the total liberation of the African continent. He knew that the only way to achieve true independence for African people is continental unification of Africa. And it is only when Africa is united that the people of the world would respect Africa. It is only when Africans have faith in their continents, in the unity of the people, the African people, that Africa can stand and be counted among the nations of the world. And the other very important aspect of Kwame Nkrumah's thought and action was his belief in social justice. He believed that only if society cared for its disadvantage would that society advance and progress. And I think these are the two distinguishing features of Kwame Nkrumah's thoughts and actions. Now, what is the relevance of Kwame Nkrumah's theories to us today? I think the most important is this concept of unity, of African unity, 
And that does not just mean the unity, continental unity, the unity of African states, but it actually means the unity of African people everywhere throughout the world. It is only when we stand as one, when we speak as one, that we will be counted among the nations of the world because we are one nation, the African nation. I hold Ghanaian nationality and I'm resident in Cairo, Egypt. But I feel that my true identity is African. And I think that that is something that I inherited from my father's legacy. And this is something that we can all share. We are all African. And being African is our birthright. And I think it is only when Africans everywhere think of themselves first and foremost as Africans, not as British citizens, not as American citizens, not as Ghanaians, not as the many ethnic groups. It is only when we see ourselves as African that the continent of Africa would be able to progress and advance. And the second, the second aspect of Nkrumahism, the thoughts and actions of Kwame Nkrumahism, Kwame Nkrumah is equally important. And that is that for a society, for any community to truly advance, there must be care. Care for the disadvantaged groups in that community. No family is a truly respectful family if the relatively well-off do not care for the brothers and the sisters that are disadvantaged and that are politically marginalized. And this was the other very important aspect of Nkrumahism. Call it socialism, call it what you will, call it social justice. But the most essential element of it is this care for the disadvantaged. If we do not love our brothers and sisters who are in prison, who are sick and ill with HIV AIDS, yeah who are unemployed, who are forced into prostitution, who leave the homeland in search for employment elsewhere. If we don't have this affection and care as a community for those of our brethren and sisters who do not have the have-nots, then we cannot advance and we cannot progress. Because the world would never respect us, would never see Africa as the continent of the future. If Africans do not care for their own, we have to care for our own. We have to advance the interests of our own, and especially of those of us who do not have a voice, who are marginalized, who are disadvantaged, who are oppressed. It is only then that Africa can truly advance. This was the message of Kwame Nkrumah, and this is the message that I wish to share with you today. Thank you very much, brother. Jamel Nkrumah.
Rise up. An inspirational speech on the principles from the father of Ghana, the son of Kwame Nkrumah, Dr. Gamal Nkrumah.